How can companies tap the collective wisdom of their employees to better understand and prepare for the future? The talk will identify predictive crowding as a concept to support the assessment of disruptive ideas and SMEs based on a conceptual framework which can be used by practitioners as well as researchers. The discussion topics proposed aim to provide in-depth insights in crowdsourced innovation practice and investigate the potential of expert crowds. Please welcome on stage Thomas Peisel, Professor Munich University, presenting his entrepreneurial selection on crowd prediction and crowdfunding, can be set as the gold standard for wisdom of crowds forecasting. Hello, everybody. Uh, we talk about the crowds. Um, Valerie. Now that we have that great new idea, what shall we do next? We need money, right? Yeah, what do you think about crowdfunding? Crowdfunding, brilliant concept. Like, yeah. you know, innovative idea, innovative funding. Sounds thrilling, let's go for it. Yeah, it's great, but I think there are also some limitations about crowdfunding. Limitations, are there? Can we get some insights into that? Yeah, maybe an academic. Whoa, yeah, I know that conference. There's a great academic talk. Wow, that sounds a bit boring, but yeah, let's Ac see. <laughs> Academics are boring? But maybe we can find the one crowd that we trust. Okay, let's see. <laughs> now we're moving back into the academic world, that's why I put my jacket back on. Crowdfunding is great. It's an outstanding opportunity for any startup. You blend in the wisdom of the crowd, you attract your future customers, you get money, and all that, what you have to do is select the right platform. No. There's more to that. So in fact, we did some research, we looked into some concepts, we looked at what is out there, and we came up with something new that we're going to share with you. The first thing that any entrepreneur needs to understand is that there is a triadic relationship. Because there is the entrepreneur, the brilliant mind with his idea, there is that platform, crowdfunding platform, and you know there are quite a lot, huge number out there. And there is the crowd investor. Now essentially what we looked at is, do we actually need an intermediary? Yes. Successful funding through crowd platforms work. Why? There is help, there's assistance, there's structuring, there's that distinction between reward-based, donation-based, and equity crowdfunding that any entrepreneur needs to learn when selecting the right platform. But then we looked into, well, what actually makes a good story? What makes a successful crowdfunding campaign? So we looked into the process where the entrepreneur selects a platform, the platform puts the idea up on the web, and then you have you know, the crowd looking up the idea and maybe invest or not. Where well, does that create a good story, a successful story? Again, learning is no. Because it is, in fact, a continuous process. The entrepreneur needs to understand the crowd he's going to attract through a given platform. Now, what do we know about the Kickstarter crowd? Essentially nothing. It's a big, huge, undifferentiated crowd. How do we make sure that people looking at the Kickstarter or any crowdfunding platform actually look at the idea that I'm promoting? Because if not, no funding. Empirical research tells us or shows that in order to be successful, you need to get at least 30% of the funding you're asking for in 24 hours. If not, 
the quote-unquote herding effect will not take place. Meaning if you don't get funding, your idea will not succeed. If your idea is not funded, the entrepreneur is demotivated, right? He tried his best. Well, maybe forget it, move on to another idea. Wrong again. It might be that he addressed the wrong crowd. Because in order to secure funding, we need to identify what crowd we're actually looking for. Hence, our research is based on one very simple thing. One crowd fits nobody. Because we all know um, the bell-shaped curve standard distribution. The bigger the crowd, the more you get funding for things that are given. So you need to attract a certain fraction of the crowd. Successful startups were asked, or successful entrepreneurs were asked, well, what was your success story? And the success story was, again, very easy. We needed somebody in the crowd to trust us. Now, if we have our great new idea, who would trust us? The essential three Fs. Friends, family, and fools. But people we knew how to address. So even campaigns that were launched on Kickstarter were initially funded by the entrepreneur's own, quote unquote, crowd. And only if through that crowd, he was able to reach a certain threshold, on average about 30% of the money they're asking, then the extended crowd populating the crowdfunding website actually invested. And uh, that led us to a very, well, interesting structure. We asked, what actually creates trust? Right? I get money from the famous three Fs. But how do I create trust at an extended range to uh, actually get address and get funding, get feedback from a larger crowd of the uh, crowdfunding platform. So we started some research, and now the academic part. We used a mixed method, qualitative and quantitative research. We looked at positivism and constructivism, and uh, we looked for the parameters that actually create and build, extend trust. So what did we do? We did some qualitative and some quantitative research. First of all, we um, did a survey with 100 participators where we generated 93 results, valid results. And um, the participators were all familiar with crowdfunding platforms or other social media platforms. Um, and in the beginning of the survey, we asked the participators about general questions of trust. Then we let them rank some indicators from McKnight's and Maya et al.'s web trust model in their importance. And then we conducted a conjoint analysis where participators had to rank a combination of different factors such as cost, professional look, security, in terms of high, medium, and low, and ranked them on a scale from one to five. In the end, participators had to make an experiment. They had to go to crowdfunder.com and kickstarter.com and go on the web pages and just try to analyze the web pages in terms of the indicators and also rank them of their importance. Um, the, the, survey, uh, the survey was um, conducted in order to generate the results of the relationship between the intermediary and the crowd. Then I interviewed five different entrepreneurs who use crowdfunding platforms in order to start their businesses and also asked them some questions about their trust 
um, relationships and also if they, con if they considered risk. And we came up with a new model um, where we could see that um, trust is experience factors, which are um, the design of the web page, the content, and also the security, times experience factors, uh, times sensitivity factors, which are benevolence, openness, integrity, intention. And we also considered in our new model the risk, especially from the entrepreneurial side. Um, the risk, what the entrepreneurs told me, um, were mostly that they had a high risk of losing their intellectual property, that someone steals their idea when they just upload the idea on the crowdfunding platform and someone on the other side of the world just takes their idea. It's a high risk. And also the risk of being um, dependent on a third party and also the risk of a cyber attack. And all these factors together um, result in the trust of these strategic relationship. Yeah, and what do we gain from all of this? There is not one crowd. In order to launch a successful campaign, you need to understand certainly your future market. But it's more important to follow a two-step approach before selecting the crowdfunding platform. You need to understand what is the crowd you're going to address? Who are the ones that are really willing and interested to provide feedback and funding? So it's fact, it's a two-step approach. And what we came up with as a recommendation certainly is that today, most crowdfunding platforms are not active in communicating with their crowd. They know there are people out there who have invested. And usually, or when we trust data, most of them fund more than one crowdfunding initiative. But what we lack is the opportunity for entrepreneurs to actually predict a crowd. If I want to sell a very specific technology, like educational gaming software, well, and I need to address either parents, right, who try to, who want to improve the education of their kids, or educational bodies, right? How do I get access to that crowd? I just can't put it up there and say like, oh, please, you know, like if I were to ask you, would you fund our you know, innovative idea, and uh, please, Michael will collect the money, right? You got to be into market research, but not the market of necessarily your future customers. It's about the crowd and the definition of the crowd. And the question is, what platform helps me to get to the crowd that trusts the platform and because the trust relationship between the, the investor and the company, the crowdfunding platform, they invest in us. And I hope we'll still make some money. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.